Okay, so here's some additional precision around when, you know, the circumstances where you should be detecting a collision. And this, I'll warn you right now, works really well for spheres. It doesn't work nearly as well for real world objects because no matter how you rotate a sphere around its center, its axis, it always has the same width in all directions. So it makes for a very useful vehicle for precise, for precise collision detection. Um, not a, a car or a similar or a humanoid object is not going to work quite so nicely, but still the general principles are the same. Okay, so we have here the same world we just talked about a moment ago with one addition, which is a variable called width factor. And we do that to account for the fact that when we move the blue sphere to the red sphere and we move it exactly the distance from one sphere to the other, it places it directly on top of, it occupies the same space as the red sphere, which is impossible in, you know, in physical reality, like I mentioned. So you don't typically want to do that. What you would rather do is detect a collision as the two object edges bump into each other. Okay. To do that, unfortunately, we need to do a little calculating. Because as we saw with the direct overlap, when we, when we calculate a distance from one object to another in Alice, we're calculating them from their center point, the center of gravity to center of gravity. So you have to account for the, for the not center of gravity so much as the center of the object. You have to account for the widths of the object, of both objects. So you want to have the outermost edge of, of the blue sphere intersect just bump into the outermost edge of the red sphere and call that a collision okay to do that we have to do a little bit of math fortunately you know every object has a function to output that object's width so we take sphere one's width through the object's functions and we divide it in two because the width is the entire width from the left side to the right side and we don't want to use that value. We want to go from the center right here to the edge. And we want to do the same thing here, from the center to the edge. And we want to take that much distance away from the distance that we're traveling. You see, if we don't take this away, then we'll go halfway into the red object. And if we don't take this distance away as well, this distance away as well, we'll travel all the way into the objects and the objects will overlap. So half of this width, and half of this width equals just brushing up against one another's edges. And so we set a variable to equal the blue sphere's width divided by two, so half the blue sphere's width, plus half the red sphere's width. Put those together, and you've got the perfect factor by which to account for a real gentle collision. And we've included that in our if statement here. So if sphere one is within that distance, the two with, with halves put together, then there is a collision, okay? Now we make an adjustment to have sphere two move forward that exact amount taken away from the distance between the two center points. So we're taking the width factor away from the distance between the two center points, which is perfect, right? But nothing's ever easy. So if we get only that distance, we won't trigger this because this is less than, not less than or equal to. So we add a tiny little, we can add a, you know, 0 0.00001, and that will push it through the threshold, and this collision detection will actually trigger. And so let's go ahead and take a look what that looks like. And bang, see, just perfect detection, which is what you're looking for, typically. And uh, if you think that's uh, kind of a lot of production to, to go through uh, to detect a collision, well, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but I think it gives you some appreciation for the gargantuan task that making a modern animated CGI movie must be. I don't know any particulars, but it just makes my head spin to think about how time-consuming and difficult and complicated and sophisticated that all must be. So there's the basic building blocks of collision detection. Uh, next up will be a bit to explain how to do that 
in an in event driven context that makes your life even more difficult when you're trying to do it in event driven world which nine times out of ten you are because you want to drive a car around and have Alice do something if the car hits uh, some object uh, we'll cover that next uh, until then study hard I'll see you in cyberspace